Hello there, friends and members of Faith Lutheran Church. A happy Wednesday to you, and let's begin our devotion in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So throughout our summer video devotions, we've been taking a look at the Christian faith one word at a time. And if you've noticed, we've, we've been looking at the book of Romans and the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. As we have, we could say that the, the first eight chapters that we've looked at have been dealing with the, the fundamental truths, the fundamental doctrines, the fundamental teachings of the Christian faith. Things like law and gospel, justification, sanctification, righteousness, atonement. But, but in chapter 9 of his letter, you could kind of say Paul goes off of specifically speaking to those fundamental doctrines of Christianity and instead starts speaking about faithfulness in practical matters of the Christian faith. And that's what we find today as we consider the word that we have before us, the word roots. And yes, I'm, I'm talking about roots, you know, kind of like the roots that you would find in a, in a plant. Listen how, how Paul speaks about roots, so to speak, in the first five verses of chapter 9 of his letter to the Romans. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as sons. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Now recall... The Apostle Paul was a Jew. And so he's talking about his ancestors. He's talking about the, the Jewish nation. And, and in a way, he's saying that the Jewish nation, they're the roots. They were God's Old Testament church. And as the roots, they had all sorts of blessings. Just consider some of those blessings that, that Paul lays out here. Theirs is the adoption as sons. Again and again, God comes to them and calls them his children, his sons, his chosen ones. And in love and grace, he dealt with them again and again, even in their rebellion. He says that there is the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Covenant, a promise. Consider the promises that God made with them. The things that they were able to see as God revealed his glory to them. The way that he came to that temple and the way he made himself known. Then he goes on to say, theirs are the patriarchs. Oh, when we think of patriarchs, we think of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. One who is called God's friend. And how the Lord brought that nation from them. And, and then... Paul lists the greatest. And from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ. The greatest advantage, the highest privilege that this Jewish nation had as the roots of God's Old Testament church was the fact that from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ. And, and then don't forget the fact that they even had the privilege, the blessing, the awesome opportunity to walk with Christ for those 33 years while Jesus was on this earth. And yet, what did they do? They rejected Christ. They didn't want anything to do with him. They refused him. And that broke Paul's heart. These roots, the ones that had all the blessings, uprooted themselves because they wanted nothing to do with the Savior of the world, the one who actually came 
from them according to his human ancestry. And as we look at these words of, of Paul, we, we see his beating, his loving heart for his people. There's application to you and to me today, even, even though probably for most of us who are watching this video, we're, we're not Jews. According to the Bible's definition, we're, we're Gentiles. But, but there is still application. And, and the application is, in spite of all of the many blessings that we have, just like the many blessings that the roots had, we are always in danger of losing Christ through unbelief. And thus, we need to be on guard. And just consider the blessings that we have. We, we have the freedom of religion here in this world. We have the ability to, to bring up God's Word on our phones, on tablets, on the computer, to, to watch solid Lutheran biblical devotions and worship services. We have the ability to open up the Bibles that are sitting in our homes and devotion books that are sitting in our homes to read them. We can even go access that Bible on the internet. We have the blessings of churches in so many areas where we can gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ and hear the Word of God. It has never been so easy to hear the truth of God's Word in all of the time of the history of this world. But with all of those blessings, are we in danger of uprooting ourselves? Because, well, we decide that we have better things we want to do. And that's the danger. And that's the warning for us. Is that we don't uproot ourselves by taking these things for granted, but then in the long run, actually not listening to Christ at all. You know, there's only, only one way to avoid being uprooted. And you know how that is? It's to send those roots deeper into Jesus Christ, our Savior, and into His Word. But you see, we can't do that if we are more focused on our businesses or our wealth or our family than we are focused on God and His Word. We can't do that if we are more focused on sports and the world around us than we are on Jesus Christ. We can't do that if we're sending our roots into the things of this world rather than into the Word of God. So dear friends, let's stay connected to Jesus. Let's stay connected by making use of our Sunday worship. Let's stay connected by making use of Bible classes. Let's stay connected by opening those Bibles and those devotion books in our homes rather than just leaving them on our shelves. Let's stay connected by having Jesus on our thoughts and in our mind in every aspect of life. Let's stay connected. And, and wouldn't you say that a devotion like this and this encouragement to stay connected comes at just the right time? I mean, after all, what has been this huge conversation in our society these days? Well, how can we stay connected to one another when there are mandates that we can't gather together? How are we to stay connected to one another when there are so many challenges to getting together. But far more important than staying connected to each other is staying connected to Christ. And let's be honest, there are all sorts of things in this world that are trying to keep us from staying connected. There's the temptations from Satan, 
There's our own sinful flesh. There's even godly things that we do on a regular basis that try to pull us away from Christ, and so they become actually ungodly. So what are we going to do? Are we going to give in and let business, life, pleasures, my will, my way, things of this world take first place? Or are we going to send our roots deeper into Christ by making use of his word more often? God help us so that we don't become like those Jews who were the roots, but who got pulled up because they were no longer rooted in Jesus Christ. Instead, God help us so that our roots become so deep, so strong, so firmly entrenched in Jesus that even the biggest and the fiercest wind that comes from the world or Satan can't ever uproot us. We pray. Lord, every day we struggle against the temptation to take you and all you've done for us for granted. So dreadful and sinister is our sinful nature that we are always only one step away from rejecting you. Defend us from this deadly threat by keeping us active in worship, faithful in devotion, and constantly connected to you. Amen.